So this time between Ascension Thursday and next Sunday, Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the Church, uh, uh, if you count the days, you find there are nine days. And what happens those first nine days between Ascension and Pentecost, the remaining apostles, Judas Iscariot was gone, the remaining apostles and some of the disciples gathered with Mary in the upper room, the very same room where Jesus had celebrated the Last Supper. And if you recall, they locked the doors and they stayed inside out of fear and they prayed. Oh, did they pray. They prayed that God would act, that God would send his Holy Spirit. And so from that first Ascension to Pentecost, those first nine days of prayer, we get the tradition of a novena. This is where it comes from. Nine days of intense prayer. Focus not on us, not on what we're going to do, but on what God is going to do. What God is going to do. And uh, so these, these are powerful days for prayer very powerful days for prayer, and I encourage all of us to really take advantage of this time of the year. Now, uh, if you knew that the entire parish was praying for you by name every day, that would be pretty good. Or, uh, let's say that, that uh, our Bishop Peter Labashi, he was praying for you by name, on his knees every day, for you. Or, Pope Benedict was praying for you. That's pretty good. <laughs> by name. But it just keeps getting better. Uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary the apostles, all the saints in heaven, they're all praying for you by name. That's what they do. They pray. But it even gets better than that. Not only the apostles and the Blessed Virgin Mary, but the risen, glorified Christ himself. If you look at the ascension, where the risen Christ ascended to the right hand of his Father. And that means that he shares in his Father's glory, in his risen human body. He shares in his Father's glory. He's at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for us. So we've got the risen glorified Christ praying for us by name. He knows us by name. I mean, that, that is so, so powerful. It really, really is. Uh, but it gets better than that. It just keeps getting better and better all the time. Uh, not only do we have the world praying for us, the saints praying for us, the Blessed Virgin the glorified Christ praying for us. But we have what is called the divine indwelling. The divine indwelling. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We're not God. But God dwells in us, and we dwell in God. That's called the divine indwelling. God remains in him, and he 
in God. So we're really sharing in the very life of God. And in and, and one of the prayers that we'll pray in today's Mass, it will talk about us sharing in the divinity of Christ. And I'm going to point that out when we come to it. This is how we know that we remain in Him and He in us, that He has given us of His Spirit. So God dwelling inside of us, that is called the Holy Spirit. That's the indwelling God. We live in God, God lives in us, and God within us is the Holy Spirit. Now you might think, when we have all these people praying for us, all these saints praying for us, and Mary and Jesus praying for us, and then we find out that God lives inside of us and we live inside of God, that everything is going to be just wonderful. Well, it is, ultimately. Ultimately. But, when we share in the life of God, when we share in the life of Christ, and St. Paul says this, you've got to preach. Don't just preach the resurrection. You've got to preach the cross and the resurrection. You've got to preach the suffering and the joy. You've got to preach the agony and the ecstasy. They go together and they're part of every human life. Enjoy the joys, but see the value of the suffering. It has eternal value. They go together. And I want to give you a concrete example. You know, uh, the apostles, Jesus prayed for them in the gospel. He prayed that they would be protected, that they were in the world but not of the world, that they would be guarded from the evil one. He prayed for them. And then they had to replace Judas, the scenario. They had to fill his office. I, uh, this is not in my head, but I pray for Judas the scenario. I, I somehow... I somehow know, without knowing how, I know that that God is so good that somehow he can surround him with mercy. That somehow, somehow this this original apostle, Judas was one of the original twelve. We all know what he did, but he couldn't have been all bad. Somehow, that God will, will reach him. I, I pray for that. I really do. But they had to fill his office, and, and, and they prayed, and then they trusted. And that's what we got to do. we got to trust God, and they drew lots, and Matthias became one of the apostles. And then Paul, Paul too, will become another apostle. He wasn't one of the original twelve apostles. But they prayed. But what happened to everybody, including Matthias, including St. Paul, every one of those apostles, chosen and, 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 and filled with the Holy Spirit and, and prayed for by, by the risen Christ and by the Blessed Virgin Mary, every one of them, with the exception of John, uh, gave their lives in martyrdom to spread the gospel, to preach the cross and the resurrection. And that's why when we have a a feast of an apostle, we wear red, symbolizing that they shed their blood for the faith. Every one of them, with the exception of John, gave their lives. But they did it joyfully. They did it willingly knowing that the cross and the resurrection go together and they share in both. They share in both. But that indwelling God is called the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're getting ready to celebrate next Sunday, Pentecost. 
Everything's going to be in red. It will all be in red for Pentecost. I'm going to in- invite uh, Vince Marola. Is Vince here? There he is. Come on up, Vince. Uh, and uh, Vince is a wonderful parishioner, a member of the choir. And you're from Rhode Island, too, aren't you? New York. Oh, all right. Well, our bishop is from New York, too. Vince. That's right. And uh, but he wants to just speak to us for a few minutes on the Holy Spirit. Good morning. As Father said, I'm Vince Marola, and uh, I'm here to speak to you briefly about the Life in the Spirit seminar to be held here at St. Catherine's, June 1st to June 3rd, and my personal experience with Life in the Spirit. Last year, I attended a seminar going in with an open mind and heart, or so I thought. I quickly found myself to be anything but that. Seminar started with music I didn't particularly like. Considering myself a traditional Catholic and a lack of what I considered to be appropriate music, I found myself to be quite disturbed. Aside from the music, the way in which some of the members of the prayer group at the seminar expressed their words, but left me with the feeling that their actions were somewhat over the top, as they say. However, having the opportunity to meet with these people and to get to know them, it then became apparent that they were just ordinary people, just like I am. But they possessed a very strong faith and love of the Lord, and their actions were their way of expressing that strong faith and love. I revisited my misaligned thoughts with regard to the music, and I realized all song, whether it's traditional, charismatic, whatever, evangelist, whatever you call it, is prayer and praise. A wise woman once told me, there isn't any wrong way to pray and worship God. I then decided to try St. Catherine's Prayer Group, and to my good fortune, I found it to be an enlightening and spiritual experience. While I have never considered myself to be a spiritual person, and I'm still very much a work in progress, my presence at the meetings has made me aware of the Holy Spirit and how the Lord works through each of us. I now understand that the good deeds my wife performs on a regular basis are evidence of the Lord working through her. At these prayer group meetings, I have witnessed how the Holy Spirit's presence manifests itself through many of the members of that prayer group. I strongly urge you to attend the seminar. It will enrich your life, not only spiritually, but your everyday activities and your relationships with others. Uh, regu- uh, registration forms are available in the Narthex. You can pick them up as you leave church. And uh, also, you can pick up a copy of the uh, bulletin today, and there are more details regarding the Life in the Spirit seminar. Please keep an open mind and attend. Thank you. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.